G'day guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Mons Geek M1 mechanical keyboard. This one is pre-built, pre-assembled from the Watt Geek company. It goes for about 240 Aussie dollars at the time of recording and you actually get a fair amount of keyboard for your money. So I'm gonna take you through all of the specs, the features, the things that I really like, some of the issues and things that I don't like and maybe that you would need to consider if you're gonna get this keyboard for yourself. Um, this keyboard was sent over for review from the Watt Geek company whatgeek.com. There's a link to that down in the video description, but of course all the opinions and everything else that I say is completely my own. So if you have any comments or questions, let me know. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, chuck it a like, get subscribed and let's begin. Now guys, I'm not a massive keyboard enthusiast like I know some of you are out there, hence why I got the one that comes pre-built. But also I think it's really important to maybe review some of the pre-built versions of this keyboard in case you're similar to me and you're still maybe a little bit unsure about what keycaps go with what switches and what profile to get and everything else and you maybe just want to get something pre-built so that's what I'm here for. I'm still sort of learning and getting to know a lot of the different terms and um, I guess what makes one keyboard better than the other and that's the thing with keyboards what I've started to realize is that there is not one keyboard that is perfect for everyone there is not like one silver bullet bullet that does the trick um, but what I think that this keyboard specifically really does a good job at being is a base or a foundation for any possible future upgrades or customizations that you might want to do to your keyboard it is extremely well built it weighs 1.9 kilograms it's an absolute tank it's got a CNC milled aluminium case for the bottom and the top. So that thing um, that really holds this together can be honestly used as a weapon if you wanted to. Now, in terms of the keys, it's got 82 keys. It's a gasket mount um, situation. So you've got gasket mounts on the key switches and then made out of silicon. And then the key caps are pre-installed. And the ones that I've got here are ASA transparent key caps. And the switches that I'm using are KTT black linear switches. The LED, the LEDs are SMD south facing. So personally, I know that south facing LEDs is not always ideal depending on the keycap that you're using but at least you do have some RGB LEDs there if you want to go ahead and customize that and make it a little bit different. Um, all the keys are programmable via their software as well and support N key rollover. So basically that means if you're pressing down multiple keys, um, the keyboard knows that, okay, you're doing maybe something like gaming or typing really fast. It's not going to cause you any issues there. Now it is compatible with Mac and Windows, which is important because this is not exclusive to one platform or the other. And in terms of connections, it's a wired USB type C connection. The cable comes in the box, of course, as well as a keycap puller and the quick start guide. Now, for the layers, you've got a bottom aluminium case, then you've got some foam, the PCB, then the bottom pad, the sandwich foam, the aluminium plate cover, and then you've got the switches and then the keycaps. These switches are interchangeable. You can swap them out with something else. If you've got cherry switches or Gatoron or maybe some other brand, as long as they're a three or five pin, um, you're going to be absolutely fine. The foam, the material that they're using on is a poron foam. So if you guys want to look up what poron is, it's a microcellular urethane with high compression, which basically means you've got good sound absorption and it's not too thick. So that's all of the technical specs. And I hope that sort of um, answers any questions that you might have. Now, something else that I wanted as part of doing this review was an extra set of keycaps and key switches. So I asked what geek can they just send over the ones that they're sort of suggesting at the checkout, which is the ACAM or ACGAM T series PBT transparent cherry profile keycap. 147 keys go for about $43 here in Australia and they come in this kind of purpley blue um, and purple pink sort of color combo which I really actually do dig and I think it looks the nicer out of the two and then the switches we've got the KTT Claret smooth linear switches are which are probably the most quiet and smooth switch that I've ever ever used so what we'll do is we'll cut to a keyboard sound typing test so you can see how they both sound.
So now in terms of the looks of this keyboard, I think personally it actually is an absolute stunner and I think anyone who comes across this in person is going to definitely be giving you a few compliments. The CNC aluminium body is the standout, the rounded corners, the chamfered edges. You can get this in black, silver, white, red, green. I've seen a whole bunch of colors, but overall, I think it's a really subtle look between, you know, a 10 keyless and a keyboard that gives you an extra um, little bit of space just for some system keys that you can maybe set up and remap to whatever you want to be. But overall, this keyboard looks absolutely stunning. And even the chamfered edges um, for where that little accent goes on the side and the recess port for the USB-C connection is a really nice touch. The RGB lighting is something that I think is nice to have, but it doesn't make or break the keyboard, in my opinion. Depending on the keycap, the RGB lighting is going to be not that useful because personally, after this video is done, I'm probably going to order myself some double shot PBT white keycaps, maybe some Cherry MX switches to go with it because that's my personal preference. And once I have those keycaps in there, these lights, the RGB LEDs aren't actually going to do too much in terms of actually helping me read the characters on the keys. It's a, it's a nice little touch. I mean, if you're going to use cherry, maybe not cherry, sorry, transparent keycaps like the one that I'm showing at the moment, then maybe yes. But overall, the RGB lighting is a nice to have. And yeah, you can customize it and do some cool effects. But Personally, I think it's probably better to go with a really nice set of keycaps to match the quality and the construction of the aluminium case and leave it at that. Now, I've had this keyboard for a few weeks and there's a few things that are worth noting. So, first of all, the bottom of the keyboard doesn't have any adjustable feet. So, if you like to change the angle of the keyboard depending on your position or what you're doing, you unfortunately cannot do this, uh, do that on this keyboard. The other thing, the software, the Software gets the job done. You can set up your macros, you can do your RGB lighting, your customizations, your shortcuts, all that good stuff, but it's not the most intuitive piece of software out there. And then the last thing is the volume knob. For me, whenever I turn that volume knob to the left or to the right by one increment, it actually went up or down by four, which is pretty annoying. So if you just want to go from like one to 10, 10 to 20, um, and do that in one I guess one notch increments, you can't do it or I couldn't do it, I couldn't achieve it. For me, every time I turn that dial, even just by one notch, it went up by four. And if I really was really sensitive and careful, I could manage to get it to go by two, but every actual notch, every tactile bump when I turn that knob, it went up or down by four, which is just a little bit annoying. It could be something that's specifically to me. I couldn't find anyone else on the internet that had that same issue, but that's just something that I found with that volume knob. But yeah, kind of just a feat. The software is not great, gets the job done and the volume dial, a little bit annoying. So would I actually recommend buying this keyboard? As long as you don't need height adjustable feet on the bottom, you're okay with dealing with some software that might not be the most polished thing in the world. And hopefully the volume knob issue goes away or maybe it's just something that's specifically an issue only to me. Um, then yes, because this keyboard is incredibly well built. It is probably the most, I don't know, premium feeling, nicest feeling, well-constructed keyboard that I've ever personally used. What I would say though is don't actually buy it pre-built. You can actually buy the shell, which comes with the PCB, you know, the foam, everything else for about $170 off websites like PC Case Gear. Then I would recommend going onto your, you know, WhatGeek website or uh, any of your other keyboard, you know, enthusiasts or accessory companies that sell switches and keycaps and find a set of switches and keycaps that suit you, that is something specific to your particular flavor. So for me, I'm probably gonna change this out to one that has Cherry MX red switches with some nice double shot PBT white keycaps. And I am probably gonna do that once this video is done and published. But that's what I would say, don't buy the pre-built because whilst, yeah, you can get something that is really nice already done, to actually change the switches and the keycaps, it's really not that difficult. It literally took me about an hour to fully strip this from what it come with and putting new keycaps on and new switches in, 
didn't actually take me that long. And I think price-wise, it's probably going to work out very similar to paying the 250 that you can actually get it for on the Work Geek website. So that's what I have to say. Other than that, though, it's been an absolute pleasure using this keyboard. I'll probably still daily drive this keyboard for a little bit longer, and then I'll switch back to something else or switch to whatever comes across the desk next. Uh, if you guys have any comments or questions, again, please let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts um, about this keyboard, uh, maybe what you want to see on the channel. If you want to continue chatting with me, you can hit me up on Discord. Social media links and all that good stuff is down in the video description, as well as an affiliate link to the WhatGeek website, which gives you guys a bit of a discount if you want to go ahead and purchase something over there. So that's all I have to say. Thanks for watching. Hope you had a good one and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.